What's good YouTube? You're back on S Motorsports. Today we're going to be assembling the cylinder heads for the LQ4 6.0 build. So guys, today we are finally assembling the cylinder heads. Uh, it's been a long process as I did end up, well, first let me show you what I picked up. These are actually, doo -doo -doo, rec port heads. So let me show you what we got here. These are actually, what, 5364 heads? So these are off of like a, a, a 2007 Silverado pickup truck. Um, I found them at, like a local uh, pick, you know, pick them place or whatever, um, where they take them off for you. Uh, and they were actually really cheap. Um, and obviously, so being rec port head, I wanted to do that because then that allows me to run a certain intake on this to make sure that it's a low profile intake as we need that for the Trans Am. So um, I got these all cleaned up already uh that was a huge process i've been i've been doing that all day i got all the valve valves lapped which they turned out awesome and i will put a before and after picture of the exhaust valve to show you what it looked like before but they turned out really good so i'm gonna start assembling these with btr valve springs that i got in the kit for my red hot cam so these are, let's see, these are, this is the part number. They're 660 dual platinum springs. Um, I ended up going with the steel retainers um, as doing some research, it sounds like the titanium, you know, will wear kind of, that's more of a race type application, I would call it, versus the steel is longer lasting. So um, we're not spinning this thing super crazy, so the steel retainers should be fine. But if we open this up, Maybe you can see what we all got in here. We got, uh, what, spring pocket pieces, retainers, locks, and valve seals. And then I also just picked up their tool as well to help install the valve seals so we don't damage them. Take a look at the spring. I haven't actually looked at one yet. Yeah, pretty fancy. So what I'm gonna do is get you set up on a tripod and I'm just gonna knock these out as I wanna, in this video, install the heads on the engine as well as I got the gaskets, I got the uh, some new head bolts as well. So I wanna show you that installed cause that to me is making some real progress. So I'm getting excited to get these heads on and have it start looking like an actual engine. All right guys, I got you set up on the tripod. What I'm also doing is I picked up a little uh, spring height measuring tool off Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. Seems to work pretty good. Uh, checking what it says here versus my six inch caliper. It's off by, well, they differ roughly 15,000. So um, it's kind of take it with a grain of salt, but I'll show you what I got here. So I measured the intake and the exhaust in there. The intake was at uh, 1825 uh, and this is at 1820. So what I also picked up was I picked up some um, shims for the springs and you put these underneath the locators um, to bring that up a little bit. So that makes sure you get the right spring pressure or the right seat pressure, I should say, on the spring uh, so you don't you know, have out of control valves. So I think I'm gonna put a 30 thousandths shim under each one. I'm gonna measure a couple more as well, but 30 thousandths then will get me kind of right at that one eight or just below, which is totally fine. I'll still have plenty of clearance for the cam because these are 660 springs and the cam is only what, 615 or something like that. So I got plenty of room yet. Um, so I think that's what I'm gonna do, just put a, a shim, 30 thou shim underneath all of them to make sure I get the right seat pressure, and then also open pressure too, that does affect that as well. But 
Um, yeah, so I'm gonna just set you up on the tripod here and start knocking them all. guys we're back it is the next day and i knocked out the other cylinder head i got all the springs installed as you can see it looks beautiful so the installation worked really good and i want to give a shout out to to this cheap amazon tool that i got for the spring compressor um it actually worked really good it was i want to say it was like 15 bucks i'll put a link in the description but i just you know made sure that you put some lubricant underneath the washer. I used some extra washers that I had and then put some lubricant on there and it spun down really easy um, with my Milwaukee uh, ratchet and it made pretty quick work of the second one. So the heads are ready to install. Um, I got the block ready to go and I got the holes all chased out, which I just used uh, a old stock bolt and cut some slots in it and ran it through each one and then brushed it off each time to make sure I got all of the, you know, rust and anything that was in there um, <clears throat> cleaned out good. So I did pick up some new bolts as you, you know, <laughs> I'm not reusing that one. Um, so what I picked up is just ARP, not stud kit, but just a, a bolt kit. Uh, this is the part number. And so I did make one mistake too. I thought the cylinder heads I have is off of a 2007 and I thought, you got the bolt kit for the cylinder head and that's that's my mistake. This is a, I believe, 03 block or it's an earlier style block. So I had to get the bolts that went with the early style block, um, which are the different length bolts. What I'm using for head gaskets is I went round and round with myself basically what head gaskets I should use. This is what I decided on, which, um, <laughs> trying to remember, but I, I believe they're just stock head gaskets, GM head gaskets off of a 2003 6.0. Um, and the reason I went with this versus like an LS9, because the LS9 GM head gaskets really aren't that much more expensive. Um, the LS9 was slightly thicker, where this is like um, 48 thousandths is what I was seeing, 48 to 49 thousandths, and a little smaller bore diameter. Um, so that gives me just the inciest bit more compression um, with these heads. And that actually puts my quench distance perfect because I did measure the uh, pistons uh, versus the deck height. And they're actually out of the hole, uh, seven to eight thousandths. That puts it right about 40 thousandths quench distance, which is perfect, or 41 thousandths. So this is what I'm running. I think it's gonna work great. So I am going to set you up on a tripod and we will start installing the first cylinder head. We'll get it torque to spec. Um, and then one also note with these ARP bolts is that you can just use a normal torque wrench versus doing the torque to angle with the GM bolts and they're reusable. So that was another reason why I went with these. Just in case if I have to take the heads off in the future, I don't have to worry about, can I reuse the bolts anymore? These are reusable now. So I basically have these bolts for, <laughs> for life, you know? So let's get you set up and let's get installing the cylinder heads. All right, step one is I already wiped the head down. Uh, just make sure there's no crap on the head at all. Um, make sure all your, get all the crap out of your pistons if anything fell in there. Yeah, there's a little bit of dirt. Yeah, it'll happen on those big jobs. So I think we're good to go. Uh, so let's get a head gasket open, lay it on. 
Make sure you have your cylinder head dowels in there. Yep, so you gotta make sure this on the cylinder head gasket, it does say front on here. So you gotta make sure that that is pointing towards the front to make sure the water jackets are positioned correctly. All right, then we can drop her on. Make sure you have your dowels in there. like that all right that's honestly the easy part next we're gonna open up the head bolt kit and I'll show you depending on what washer you have in this kit uh, details what the torque is There's, they should have a spec sheet in here as well um, to say what torque level it's at so let's check it out because they were having some problems I guess from what I was reading in terms of uh, bolts breaking which is never good and it basically comes down to how the washer sits on. Man, so much tape. All right, finally. All right. So this is the sheet I'm talking about. Okay. And it's saying this, so the older ones were 75 foot pounds. This is 80 now. So what that means is the washers that they included in this should be the updated design and they are. And I will show you this. Let me get one out. So the older design washers were just their normal flat washers, call it. But these updated washer designs, see it's flat on one side, that's, and it's got the radius here, the bolt head sits on that one. But then this is a textured side, basically. And these need to be cleaned as well. They can't be oily because that textured side goes down on the aluminum and that makes sure that this washer doesn't spin when you're tightening the bolt because if it spins you get an inaccurate torque reading actually you're applying more torque to the threads when this spins and that's how you get stripped threads so you got to make sure I was reading in these instructions prior was you have to make sure everything is nice clean and dry and then the lubricant that they give you here, this only goes on the threads and the and uh, the bolt head, which is going to be on this surface. So nothing on this surface, um, which is going on the aluminum head. So I'll go over that again. Let's get everything out of the package. Okay, so the next step is I got the washers all cleaned up and I got some ARP lube on the bolt threads and then on the top of the washer. As you can see, this is the serrated side that goes down towards the cylinder head. So I got the chamfer facing uh, the bolt head. So install it like that. And then I'm just gonna kind of give it a little spin to distribute the ARP boom. And so this short bolt goes on each of the ends so I'll plop this guy in. I'm trying to do it carefully so I don't get any lube on the bottom um, of the washer. So to make sure the torque readings are accurate. You can just get these all run down to basically finger tight. All right, now we're gonna be following the ARP torque sequence. So we're gonna to torque in three passes, 25, 50 and 80 foot pounds and we're following their diagram in terms of one two three four five six to know which ones to torque so you torque all the big ones first um, and then i got to put in the small ones <clears throat> on the top here and those get torqued to last so 25 foot pounds so barely anything starting out okay next step is 50. last pass to 80. All right, 
So now I just gotta put the uh, five bolts up here and torque that. <clears throat> okay, I got the five bolts in and that follows a torque sequence as well. Basically starts in the center and then it goes outward. And those all just get torqued to 25 foot pounds. These little washers don't have the serrated portion on them, but I did them the same as far as uh, ARP lubricant on the threads and on the bolt head underface. Okay, these get torqued to 25 foot pounds. All right, that's it. We got a whole side done. Everything is bolted down. The other side is the exact same. Uh, so I'm gonna flip this over, put you on time-lapse and knock out that other side. Boom, guys, we got the cylinder heads on. Man, this is looking like an engine. I'm getting excited. Parts are flying on. Stay tuned as, what, the next one, I think the next video, I'm probably gonna throw on the rockers and I got an upgrade for that. Obviously everyone does that, so probably not a surprise, but we're gonna knock that out. Maybe in that one as well. I will show you, obviously, we need to be running a square port intake. I'll show you what I got for that in a, in a future video as well, as I got some pretty slick parts to go on top of here. And we can start decking this thing out. I mean, it's it's looking really good. I got the valve covers painted out up. I will throw those on so it looks better even. So yeah, I mean, I'm getting pretty excited. Uh, we're making some real progress here and I gotta slap the balancer on. I got a new OEM one of those. Um, I just need a little help to make sure that the engine doesn't spin over when I'm torquing that. Otherwise I can get that on and then start working on the accessories as that's gonna be a little project in itself as well. So thanks for joining in guys. That's it for this one, but it, stay tuned as we're making some real progress on the LQ4 build and more parts flying on in the next one. So stay tuned, peace.